Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to look at how to properly make use of displacement textures in 3ds Max with V-Ray. Before we get started, let's take a look at the material we'll be using. It's Ground Asphalt Broken 001 and is easily one of my favorite ground textures here at Polygon. Um, it's brilliant for demonstrating this displacement, which is why I picked it. <laughs> um, I've already got the 4K version saved to my hard drive and I'll include a link um, below the video. As a note, uh, I would recommend getting the the 4K version if you're going to be following along, because with displacement you really do want as much detail from the texture as possible. So let's take a look at what it is we're going to be doing. You've probably heard of a bump map before, which is used to artificially give the impression of height in a material. Well a displacement map is different. It is used to literally deform the object based on the values of the texture, with the black areas being the deep crevices and the white areas being the peaks. It results in a far more realistic material. Okay, so let's look at recreating this effect with V-Ray. We've got a simple scene here. It's just a plane and a dome light, and some, uh, which has got some HDR lighting. And that's pretty much it. Um, we'll start off by bringing in our material. Now I've covered the usage of this material converter in a previous video, which I'll link below this one. So let's just go down to ground asphalt broken. Now I've got a little green tick there, that's, that's just because I brought this in previously um, into this scene. You won't have that. Let's hit load material. And there we go. Now let's jump over to the material editor and under this temporary library we've got our imported material which I'm going to drag into the slate editor, make sure the plane's selected, right mouse button and then assign material to selection. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> We're good to go. Now with V-Ray, the uh, default settings for displacement actually work pretty well. Um, let's take a look now though. So yeah, as you can see by default, the uh, displacement doesn't look too bad. Perhaps a, a little bit on the strong side, but compared to some other renderers that where by default there's nothing, it's just like a flat plane, um, that's certainly not bad. Now to adjust the effect, we've got two routes we can go down. Now, the easiest one is within the material itself. If I just double click on that, scroll down to maps, and then you have this displacement uh, map that's plugged in and a value to control it. So you can raise or lower that to affect the displacement. That's literally the only control that you've got though within the, within the material itself. So what I prefer to do is jump over to the modifier stack and add in a V-Ray displacement mod. Yeah. Now this just uh, overrides the displacement within the material itself. So if I now jump over to the editor again, I'm going to disconnect the displacement. I don't think you actually need to do that, but I'm going to anyway. And instead feed that map into this modifier. There we go. So now our displacement map's plugged into this instead. And rather than just a generic like percentage value, you actually have amounts here to change in 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 scale. Um, this is currently set to 0 0.02 meters, which is what I fiddled around with previously. It's, it's remembered the settings there, that wasn't the default. Um, and you can also shift it up and down. Um, so if your displacement isn't in line with the rest of your scene, you can use the shift to raise or lower it uh, to, to fit in nicely. And you also have an option here to change the resolution of the map, the, res the resolution that the displacement will use. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now, also one thing to bear in mind is this is tied into the displacement settings within V-Ray. Um, yeah, within here, the edge length settings and whatnot. Um, the that's how you affect the level of subdivision. Now, V-Ray uses adaptive displacement, where it will adaptively subdivide your plane based on its distance from the camera, and that's de decided by this edge length value. Um, a value of four works pretty well. It's a good balance between quality and uh, system resources. Though if you want even finer detail, you'd lower that value to something like three or two, um, and you get even more subdivision, but then you start to start to really use up the, uh, the RAM. Um, so in general, I'd, I'd leave that on a value of four, um, and it should work just fine. So yeah, with these settings in place, let's hit render again and we should get a slightly nicer result. 
Okay, so yeah, looking looking quite a bit better. We've lost some of those kind of extreme peaks that we were getting in the uh, in the original render. I'd possibly raise the strength just a little bit, uh, maybe to like 0 0.025 meters. Um, but yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So in summary, we've taken the material from Polygon.com, brought it into 3ds Max using our material converter, uh, experimented with the different types of ways to adjust displacement, um, favoring the V-Ray displacement mod in the end, uh, and then and then rendered it out with V-Ray.